Deep learning has progressed a remarkable amount over the past few years, and it seems that with each passing week, amazing new research and discoveries are published. There are many factors that are driving this rapid growth and expansion, and one particular area of research that has been particularly interesting to watch is the proliferation of automated machine learning tools, starting from neural architecture search and now expanding to other parts of the machine learning workflow that can also be automated. In this video, we'll talk about automated machine learning tools and dive into some details around neural architecture search in particular. Automated machine learning extends beyond just creating novel model architectures. Its scope covers all aspects of the machine learning workflow that can be potentially automated. There's data pre-processing, feature engineering, model selection, architecture search, hyperparameter optimization, model interpretation, and prediction analysis. Now, while much of the research has focused on neural architecture search, the tooling available today extends far beyond just that. Let's take a look in more detail at these steps in the machine learning workflow that can be automated, starting from data preparation and ingestion. When data first arrives, we can try to automatically detect the type of data in each column, whether it's Boolean, discrete or continuous number, or perhaps just text. We could even go as far as to try to detect the intent of a column, perhaps identify the target column or figure out if a column should be numerical, categorical, or just free text. Then there's automated task detection, figuring out whether to use, say, binary classification, regression, clustering, ranking, or something else altogether. Once our data has been loaded in, the next consideration is feature engineering. Feature engineering can be tedious and time consuming, but automating some of this can save a data scientists a lot of time and even sometimes expose blind spots since the computer will always be totally thorough. Tasks in this step include things like feature selection, pre-processing and extraction, as well as the detection of skewed data or missing values. Next up is model selection. While the model to use for a given data set and task may seem obvious to a human data scientist, Building a computer system to automate this process for a variety of different data types is not quite so simple. Model selection not only includes finding the general type of model to use, but it can also include doing neural architecture search to find the specific structure most suitable for a given data task. Finally, there's the automation of the evaluation step. Everything from validation procedures to checking for mistakes, as well as analysis and visualization of the results. Okay, so that was a broad overview of some of the types of tasks that automated machine learning tools can tackle. Now let's dive into one particular area that has received the lion's share of research over the last few years, neural architecture search, often abbreviated as NAS or just NAS. This area of research is all about discovering the right model for a given machine learning problem, often through trying out a large variety of candidate models and then automatically selecting the best model. This task can be broken down into three broad steps, search space, search strategy, and then performance estimation strategy. Search space is all about how we decide the kinds of models to even look at in the first place and how we explore the variations that are possible. There are many ways to define a neural network structure and various degrees of freedom. For example, I might only search among fully connected deep neural networks between two and seven layers deep and up to say 20 neurons per layer. Of course, this does have a downside as it assumes that I know something about what neural network structures would be most promising for this data set or domain. So while imposing these limitations up front can simplify our search space, it does come at the expense of introducing some amount of human bias. Some other approaches to defining the search space that have been tried by researchers include allowing skip connections across layers, as well as letting cells or blocks of a network be searched, but then predefining a high level structure of how these blocks are arranged and connected. 
Once a search space is defined, we need a search strategy. This step is all about how we explore the various model architectures. This is important because we want to reach a good model quickly. And in some cases, a search space may contain infinite model architectures to choose from. So we can't actually perform an exhaustive search. Many different approaches have been tried over the years, and many more are still to come. Some approaches that have been tried with success include Bayesian optimization, which is also a popular choice for hyperparameter tuning. Uh, reinforcement learning, using that performance score of each model to drive that loop, as well as gradient-based and evolutionary methods, which adopt some ideas from other areas of science. Search strategy is an important topic, but it's also worth pointing out that search strategies are somewhat linked to the search space. Different strategies may be more or less suitable for certain designs of search spaces. Now this brings us to the third and final point performance estimation strategy, which is all about figuring out how good a candidate model is performing. Ideally, we would just train a candidate model on the entire data set and see how it performs on our test set. But this can prove too time consuming for those larger training data sets. So to save time, various shortcuts are used to get an estimate of how good a candidate model might become. Hence, performance estimation strategy. First up, we have the technique of using lower fidelity estimates, which can be anything from training for fewer epochs, or perhaps just on a subset of the data. Or if for things like visual data, you can train on downsampled data. The training results will, of course, be lower than that of a fully trained model. But the idea is that you will still be able to get a relatively stable ranking of those candidate models. Another performance estimation strategy is called learning curve extrapolation. This approach involves stopping training early when a model does not seem to be going anywhere fast, and so time can be saved by not training it any further and then directing those resources toward more promising models whose training metrics are improving more rapidly. A third performance estimation strategy is one-shot models with weight sharing. First, a super graph is trained on the entire data set. And then subgraphs of that model inherit the weights from the supergraph. So no further training is needed for these candidate models. They just need to be evaluated for performance against the test set. So it saves a ton of time. So that's our overview of some automated machine learning methods and a bit of a dive into neural architecture search techniques in particular. Neural architecture search has led to some remarkable results, beating out state-of-the-art hand-tuned models across a wide range of model sizes and latency requirements. It's really quite amazing. And with the continued development of these tools, I think it's very possible that this will become the preferred approach in the future when it comes to creating top-notch models for well-defined use cases and domains. Thanks for watching this video about automated machine learning tools. And if you enjoyed it, hit that like button and let me know. And subscribe to the Kaggle YouTube channel to get more great data science content.